Women, hide your children as we feast our eyes on the golem Elijah. Elijah is one of the sideshow spectacles in Clive Barker's The Infernal Parade, Series 1. direct your attention to the spectacle that is the Ultra Measuretron 5000. That is my tape measure. We're going to go ahead and put it to the top of the hamster wheel of terror to tell us that Elijah stands at 6.7 inches in height or in centimeters. Let me switch over to that for you. 17.2. Luckily for those assembling the Golem Elijah will happily be coming across a figure that requires very little assembly at all. In fact, it comes in two pieces. It comes with the main cart. And then, of course, much like all the other ones, sigh, you're going to have to install the wheels. And the wheels can be just as much the frustration, perhaps even more the frustration than what we have encountered before. You have to attach these metal rods. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time discussing this because you guys probably at nausea you guys don't want to hear about it. But needless to say, the wheels are just a pain in the butt to put in. The back wheels, not so much. But the front wheels just makes me sigh. Just makes me want to cry. On the side of one of the carts, I don't even know what you would call this. Would you call this a cart? I'm thinking like a little rail cart, if you will. Um, on the side there is the Golem Elijah. And then we flip it around. The other side also says the Golem Elijah. Other than that, the only other assembly that's required is to take the, the wheel, the cage, the circular cage in which Elijah is inside. And all you have to do is just attach it like this. You just attach it. it you don't even really tab it in place. You're sitting just over top of the geared wheels there. And that's it. That's all that's required. Um, definitely a lot easier than some of the other Infernal Parade figures that we've had a look at. The end result, though, still is, despite for as simplistic as perhaps putting the assembly together is for this guy, he actually is a neat-looking spectacle. I like that this cart has some additional pulleys and mechanisms. You can't rotate these. They almost even tease you by, oh, hey, I can turn these. No, you really can't. I mean, that's as much as you're really going to get from it you want to force it then sure of course it could turn but really what it's turning it's turning the wheel here so if i rotate it it does in theory and i want to just say in theory allow you to rotate it but the biggest problem is this is all plastic i wouldn't want to be doing this too often in case i broke a handle off in case i broke this off for example i like the gimmick in which this does actually have a functional uh, you know, turning mechanisms, but again, I really wouldn't, I wouldn't gamble doing that too often, especially this being a slightly older piece. The plastic, I'm sure, is a little bit more brittle since when we first had picked this up in stores. So again, you can rotate it, but I would just leave it alone. I would just, yeah, just leave it alone. It's got some nice coloring though to it. It still has the wood flooring there as well, we're getting some nice little riveted portions of metal that have been added to it. Again, the inner workings is really neat. And I marvel at the fact that McFarlane would have incorporated. There goes the golem cross there. Luckily, there's very little to him that could actually break unless he landed on his arm. But I'm impressed the fact... There he goes right there. I'm impressed the fact that this does actually function, if at a very small amount. So, having a look then at the Golem, this is something that 
probably will happen at least one more time over the course of this review. And if you do have this for yourself, you gotta be careful that this thing doesn't wheel its way right off. There's enough of a stopping point that the cage isn't gonna pop right off on you. But if you're not lining it up just right, the thing is gonna roll right off. We'll just put this right over here and we'll look at the golem himself. I don't even know how this would have necessarily opened. I'm sure there would have been a latch on the front that would have opened up this way and they would have fed him through. It definitely doesn't give you much space to work with. Can't also be the most comfortable of things either because there's no flooring to it. He's really just kind of sitting himself, resting himself across these bars, which can't be the most comfortable of things. Now he's also been chained to the top you can see it there he's got a few little chains one chain is chaining itself to the side of his face hooking his lip over and attaching it to the side via this this chain here and then there's a secondary chain that's attaching to the side of his face and then there is a hook on the top that's attaching its way also to a chain he's also got a rope a real rope that is hooking on to the back portion of his torso and roping its way through the top there one of the top bars He's a really neat looking figure. I don't really know what's happened here, whether this is something he's done himself or people have poked and prodded at him. You can tell that he's been in there for a very long time by the growth, the length of these disgusting toenails. Look how long and gross those look. It's just disgusting. Also, his feet are quite filthy. I'm wondering why these areas, the under areas of his arms, for example, and the areas underneath his feet are so slick. I wonder if they're actually throwing stuff at him. Could be maybe oil from the mechanism in which this will be spinning that's causing this additional grease to find its way planted onto his body. Speaking of body, we spin the figure around. A nice little small touch is he's got this little tiny, little baby arm growing out from his torso. He's also made up of some spots, and he has what looks to be those embedded uh, little decos that they've added underneath his flesh. I would hate to know this poor guy's story. Of course, like if you wanted to see any and read any of the stories that are tied with the Infernal Parade, you could probably look online. And as I've said over the course of the three reviews or so that we've looked at for these, I just didn't want to spend the time bogging down the review by showing you the story, or at the very least reading off the story for you. You guys would probably be here for another 15, 20 minutes of me just reading the story. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't do that. Uh, as we look a little further into the figure, he's got a secondary hand here, which is almost even harder to make out than this one here. So it looks like he's got two small baby hands. And then he has what almost looks like it was borrowed from one of the Predator figures. He's got a necklace of bones. He's a neat looking figure, but you can't help but also sympathize for this monster. I'm sure he probably has a heart of gold, and yet they've just shackled him inside this circular disc for human spectacle, something that people can just look at, shriek at when they see this monster. But again, I'm sure he's probably a, a kind soul until, of course, he breaks his way through and slaughters the masses. Now, he doesn't have much in the way of posability. You, in theory, could rotate his arm, and that's really about it. The head doesn't have posability. This arm here is already grabbing onto the side of the bar, so there's really nothing you can do right there. Um, that's about it. That's all you're going to get in posability. I would say that's about it, but that really is it. That's all you're going to be getting in posability. The splendor and the sight to be had is more so for the fact of not so much what it does do, but what it doesn't do, and that kind of goes across the board as well for the Infernal Parade, these are more show pieces than they are anything else. You're going to look at them, you're going to admire them, and then again, if you want to bring in some of the other characters, for example, um, you can attach them. And I'm just, just putting these on just for the time being, just to show you. I'm going to spin this one around, and we'll just attach it like so. And you can have them all together, one together, one after the other. Now, the thing about this one here is I've noticed, depending on which way you've got them facing, you'll see that there is an angle for them, which means in the case if you want to have them connected, say, for example, to this one, you would have to have the hitch 
um, actually be able to be the opposite way around. So you may have to mix and match them depending on which way you want to have it lined up to have all the infernal parades actually connected to one another as they parade their way through the city or the small town, I guess, in which the infernal parades are making their appearance to. The appeal of the Infernal Parade is that each of the characters that make up this line are very different from one another. This has been an ongoing trend that I've seen with all of the older McFarlane lines, whether it be the Twisted Land of Oz, whether it be Twisted Christmas, insert any line as the example there. Each of the characters that make up those lines have all been very different, which makes me think that a member of McFarlane's team were each responsible for coming up with these designs. That would explain why these characters all look different from one another. Or there's a good chance as well that these were all coming from the same dark mind of Todd McFarlane, which I could very well believe that be possible as well. The Golem Elijah looks very much different than Tom Requiem and looks distinctly different than Spaticus and looks drastically different from Mary Slaughter, as we will see when we have a look at um, Dr. Fetter's family of freaks and Bethany Bled. You'll also see that those characters are very unique to one another. I really like the golem Elijah. I don't know if I would say he's my favorite because he is one of those characters that only benefits from what he's inside of. If he was just standing on his own, I don't feel as much the appeal would be there, but putting him inside this circular hamster wheel of cage, sitting him perched on top of the the actual mechanism is a really neat touch. And while I do like the fact that you can rotate the lever to actually spin the the cage, I don't know if I would advise it though, because you never know that one turn could cause a break in the handle and then the, the figure as a whole would never be the same again. I'm willing just to leave it alone. And even though I appreciate the fact that a gimmick was incorporated, I'm just willing to appreciate the Golem Elijah for what he is. And that is a really neat looking spectacle. Today we were continuing our looks in this spooktacular fest of the Clive Barker's internal Infernal Parade, and today we were having a look at the Golem Elijah. As I probably had alluded over the looks, the final looks here, we're still going to have a look at Bethany Bled, and we're also going to look at Dr. Fetter's Family of Freaks, so there's still two more sideshows to be checking out over the course of the Infernal Parade, so hopefully you guys will be staying tuned for that. If at any point you've managed to pick up any of these figures for yourself, let me know down below what your favorite Infernal Parade character is. You don't even have to have picked this up for yourself, but just based on these reviews, what's your favorite so far? Let me know down below in the comments section. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. And one better, when you're finished this video, why not swing over to the homepage? See if there's any videos that you may have missed along the way. Thanks for watching, guys, as you always do. And I'll see you next time.